that, and other promoters will start seeing you. And that's how then you like start getting a lot of gigs. And once you got a lot of gigs, you're going to get bookings all the time because most of the promoters go on to Facebook, they see, oh, this guy did this party, this party, this party, this party, and then they book you. Okay. How often do you do you guys practice? No, not not so much. In the beginning, yeah, we used to practice like every week. Okay. Now it's like if there's something new that we want to try, like say we go to a festival and we see this guy, like um, there's this thing at Layback Youth that where he plays a full track just off the tempo. Yeah. So you'll bring it down into a booth that's like da -da 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 onto onto one and one, and then you'll play the full track just swinging the tempo like this. That's something that like we looked and we're like shit. Let me try that. And how how, impo how important is it to be in competitions well, as DJs? Yeah. For now, for us, we feel like we don't really need a competition because our brand is great. But it is where you started. That's where we started. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that is, it is something that actually catapulted our career. And that's good exposure. But there's so many other ways besides the competitions to get the exposure that you need. Yeah. Um, Number one is the because you can get like I know I don't know if you like you know South on those guys. Um, they also like a duo like similar to us. Mm -hmm. um, no one knew about them two years ago, and then they they met DJ Waras, who moved from YFM to Five FM, and mm -hmm. now they play a set every Friday on Five FM mm -hmm. on a Friday, and then like oh that like boosted their career. Within six months, they were playing all the gigs. Yeah, so, and do you have a manager? Okay, now how you had a manager. You had a manager. Uh, <laughs> how how, uh, how, how do you manage yourself? You see, the thing is, for us, um, we can, we, we're not like a fresh or euphonic where we've got like 17 gigs every month or whatever. Um, so it's like two, three a weekend, every weekend. So we can manage it ourselves. Mm. Um, if we wanted, like when we first met up with our manager, we wanted a manager that was going to outsource gigs for us. So get us more than what we're getting ourselves. Yeah. And it wasn't happening. So that's why we're like, well, I was just do it myself. Because we're paying a commission fee to this guy when it's nothing that like, he can't do. Yeah. So he was taking his cuts and then we weren't great. We're in the same place. So and, like, we might as well just make ourselves. Yeah. Right. What are you using to manage yourself besides the social uh, media? What are you using? Are you, uh, okay, you, see, you mentioned 5FM Ultimix, but besides that, and uh, and social networks, what are you using to market your brand further than that? Or from further where you are now? Well, it's funny to say, but word of mouth is like one of the biggest things. Yeah. Mm. We, don't, we don't give out flyers and pamphlets. And, although in the beginning, like when we first, in like 2013, we used to, um, when we played like a big party, we knew it was a big party, we would go with like a, a, a CD with a set on it. But I don't know for legal reasons you can't do that anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll get caught. <laughs> but in the beginning we didn't know about that. But that's what that and it actually like helped us a lot because then people would like take the CD from the party and then and right then go the and play. But now you have like SoundCloud, you have um, Mixcloud, you have all those those platforms where you can put up stuff and people can stream it without hardly any data usage. They can be sitting at school, break time, listening to your mix, whatever, and that marks you a lot because then mm -hmm. they talk to their friends and you heard this, and you heard this, and you heard this, and that's like a lot how a lot of our, our marketing now is, is happening. Okay. One last question from me. Now let's say you have an argument, personal argument and you're playing tomorrow. Yeah. How do you sort that out? Maybe well, we have had a lot of times personal <laughs> issues, but we leave that behind the no, outside of the club. Outside, outside of the club. Okay. So even if we're hating each other, when you get onto the set, it's, we play. It's, like, mm. it's, not, it's not about us at the end of the day, it's yeah, about the crowd. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, can I ask you <laughs> The DJ annual fee, Samro, did you guys pay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going through the registration process now because we have to register anyways for um, our production because we have tracks that we produce that are released and stuff. So okay. we have to anyways register with Samra and Sampra and all those. But members. that's the DJ annual fee. This one is not for producers. Well, no, no, the annual fee, we're going to get it anyways because I can see maybe in the next two years with the whole Kuvo thing and the clubs are going to start clubs are going to start bringing in lists after every weekend this is what we've played this is what was played in our club what, what, what. so for us as producers we actually get a return if we come into the club we play four of our own tracks we're going to get a percentage from it okay. so it's worth it for us to then, okay, then to register with that thing. I think and I think they're going to clamp down on that yeah it's coming <laughs> oh, it's coming just waiting for the structure to come in place yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, a bit, it's a bit too foggy now like there's yeah. no one really knows what's what Okay. Uh, how much you must pay and what you must pay and what are you actually paying for Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, no, the cash is great. Yeah, amazing. Where's your money? Yeah.
Yeah. Okay, thank you. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Ross. Thank you.